let's say you have a basic application built with Next.js or some other front-end heavy framework. Here's one I just put together. Now I want a dashboard area, somewhere that a user can go, but they have to be logged in to see. Either it has protected data or I want it customized with their name, email, or some other kind of personal information. So I need some sort of authentication, a way for a user to log in or register in order to see this particular area. I've seen developers use or suggest third-party applications to handle this authentication for you. I'm not here to disparage or talk bad about those platforms. They exist for a reason and they serve their purpose pretty well. But I don't think they're always necessary. So why can't we just handle it ourselves? I've seen some people say that managing your app's authentication can be a security risk, overcomplicated, and expensive to run and maintain. Let's try to break down these three areas and see if they hold up. So starting with security. Now this might be a generalized and overarching statement, but if you're using a modern and well-maintained full stack framework like Laravel, Django, Rails, or anything similar, you really don't have to worry all that much about security. And the reason for that is due to a few different factors. First and foremost is that these frameworks are well-maintained. They have consistent development, security audits, and regularly patch any issues that you might see involving security. So we see right here in the Django repo, we have a CVE that was recently patched. Something else is that with these frameworks, sensitive data like user passwords are hashed with a secure algorithm like Bcrypt, Argon2, or something similar before they're added into the database. Nothing is stored as plain text. They can also rely on environment variables as well to store things like application secrets on a per environment basis. Now for the rest of this video, I'm going to be focusing on PHP and the Laravel framework. It's one I'm the most comfortable with, and historically, PHP has been seen as an insecure language to work with. So it'd be nice to kind of dispel those rumors as well. Now with Laravel, we have a couple different options for authentication, both stateless and stateful. This first party package Laravel Sanctum allows us to authenticate into an application using either API tokens or session cookies. And both of these methods are stateful authentication. We'll have to look up the user's information through a database call using either of these two options. And it's actually what I'm using in that example application that I showed you earlier. So if we go ahead and take a look at that code base. So in my front end folder here, we have our next app and my auth folder here holds the Laravel application. And if we go into the routes web file here, we can see that we have in our API user call in order to get our user's information. This is under the middleware auth sanctum. What this middleware says is that a user has to be authenticated into the application, and then it's using sanctum behind the scenes to pull out the browser session and decode it and look up that user's information in the database and then return it back to the call. If there's an invalid or missing session that's coming in, we'll actually be redirected to the login screen. So in my application, if I hit up dashboard, we can see that it loaded up for a second, but I didn't have an authenticated session associated with my browser. So it redirected me to this login screen here. And so now I can sign in or sign up for an account. So now I'm brought back to the dashboard. My user information is populated as expected, and we can go ahead and take a look at the actual calls that are being made. So let's bring this up here and we can go to this user call and we can see that we're getting a response back of my user object. And if we go to the request headers here, we can see we have a Laravel session cookie associated with our particular application. And so this is intercepted by that middleware, decoded, and the user in the database is found and sent back using this request. And so now we move on to the thought of overcomplication. This was set up in a matter of minutes on a new Laravel application, installing just two different packages. So we saw the Laravel Sanctum package that provides us with the authentication using sessions or API tokens, but I also installed a package by DevDojo to give the front end of our authentication a bit more polished look. So it's fully free and open source. You can check it out at devdojo.com auth, but this is what it looks like behind the scenes in our Laravel application. So because I'm in a local environment, I can view this auth setup route here, and it gives me the ability to completely customize my login screen. So I can choose the logo, the background, the different colors for buttons and text, alignments, fav icons, language, any kind of social providers. If I wanna have the user be able to log in with any of these websites or applications, I just have to provide them with a particular key inside my ENV file for the Laravel application. And then it'll be automatically available on that login screen. 
So there's no branding associated with this. I can customize this to the particular brand that I'm trying to build on my application. So I can just change the logo associated with my login and preview it right here. And we also get different screens as well for like verifying email, password resets, or even two-factor authentication. This is out of the box with an open source package. Now, right now, I have the ability to send users information back to my Next.js app, but I really don't have a way to manage my users who are in that application, at least not without some kind of manual method. So I can use PHP Artisan Tinker and go into the database this way and see all of my users associated with my application. But if I wanted to view them in a more UI friendly way, I'd have to create a screen for that. But it wouldn't be all that difficult. I would just have to create a new route in this application, set a middleware to a particular user, return a view with all of the users associated with our little API authentication, and then tie in some custom middleware so that only a particular subset of users can view this particular screen. So for instance, I might want users who are only admins to view this, or maybe even just my email to be able to view this particular screen. But you know, then from there, I can see each of the individual users, maybe even have additional views to edit their details, delete them, manage them, and so on. Now we can't just have this application existing on our computer, we have to have it deployed out to the internet somewhere on a server. And again, that part doesn't have to be that complicated. So I've went ahead and deployed my authentication API out on a $4 a month DigitalOcean droplet. This is the cheapest VPS that I could get. And so we see it right here at this IP address and we can see it live on the screen. Now I've gone ahead and set up an API endpoint where I can grab a particular user's information by their ID in the database. This should be the same latency and load as if I was getting a user's information from either the session cookies or token authentication. So I wanna see how reliable it is being on this cheap server. So I can go ahead and grab my user's information and we can see here we're getting a response back in about 360 milliseconds, 370, 332. So about a little under a half a second, which isn't too bad. And that's at the absolute cheapest DigitalOcean droplet that we can buy. Now, if you don't wanna use your own hardware, there are some other options. If you wanna go serverless, you can use Breath and deploy your PHP application out to AWS Lambda instances instead. So you might have better throughput and concurrency, but be billed on a per usage basis. So we touch base on security, complexity, and expense. What are the biggest downsides of going this route hosting our own authentication? To me, the biggest hurdle is maintenance. So we discussed that we have our application set up on this server. We have to be accountable for this server. Likewise, if we were to deploy it on AWS Lambda, we'd be responsible for the AWS instances that it runs on. I'd need to regularly SSH into my server and run apt upgrade or a similar command to ensure that my server software is up to date, but I would also need to ensure that my actual web framework is up to date. So in my authentication API, I can check my composer file and see my PHP dependencies, and I'm right now running on Laravel version 11.9. I'm also using Sanctum 4 and DevDojo Auth 1.0 but I would need to make sure that these are regularly updated in the event of security patches or large scale framework changes. I'd have to, in the case of PHP, run composer update, ensure that there's compatibility with my application and push the changes up to a deployment on my server. So it's an additional step that some people might not wanna take. And this is kind of where I'm gonna wrap things up. You can host your own authentication and it will work most likely pretty seamlessly, but there's a trade-off to owning your own data the maintenance and the support of your server and your application falls on you. But for something like $4 a month or even the Lambda free tier, it might not be a bad idea for fast moving startups or smaller applications to host their own authentication, to, to use something like Laravel, Django, or Rails in order to have a platform that stores a user's information and allows a user to authenticate seamlessly and securely while being able to maintain and own their own data. But third-party platforms do exist for authentication, they're easy to use, and some of them do have a generous free tier, but you're dealing with vendor lock-in and potentially unexpected changes in pricing. So it's all kind of a trade-off. But if you wanna host your own authentication for an application that runs on something like Next.js, I wouldn't be scared of it.